Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, welcome back to Forward Assist. We just celebrated the 80th anniversary of D-Day, and hats off to those veterans that are still alive that went through such an ordeal on that day so that we could live in the society that we do today. If you gentlemen think that Saving Private Ryan is a good representation of D-Day, let me know in the comments below. I do. Although the rest of the movie does get a little bit silly. Awesome. With that being said, gentlemen, let's take a look at PSA's Sabre Duty Rifle. Um, this thing is now my current duty rifle at work for my police job. So this is something that I have been using for six months now um, since I got it from PSA. They did send it out to me, so be advised of that. There was no transfer of money or anything in that manner for a good review. They simply sent it out. I did have to provide the muzzle device, which we'll talk about in a minute, because they don't currently offer them. But thank you to Cameron and PSA for sending this thing out. It's been a really, really nice rifle to use. So let's talk about it. But before we do that, remind you, gentlemen, to like, subscribe, check out my affiliate links in the link tree. I do have affiliate links to Palmetto State Armory. And am I going to give this rifle a biased review so that you'll spend money on it and make me money? No, I will not. I think this is a good rifle, but there are some things I could suggest for improvements. So we will talk about that now. So what is the Saber series? Well, PSA has long been known for making lots of rifles. Um, now, of course, they've expanded into AKs and PCCs and handguns, but for the longest time, PSA was known for making rifles and um, selling all kinds of accessories and their daily deals, like that meme you've probably seen. Um, so... They've made quality weapons for a long time, but of course they do have their more budget line. And I've had no issues with their budget line. I know that some people have from time to time, but I know that PSA is always very quick to correct those issues. Um, but PSA seems to have wanted to separate their standard and more budget tier from what they have decided to call their Sabre series. Named Sabre. It, yes, it is pronounced Saber. You sure it's Saber? <laughs> Not Sabre, as I've heard some people say. Saber. Saber. However, they have a plethora of options if you go to the website. There's all kinds of different rifles and uppers, both in mil spec forged and in uh, billet rifles. So there are way too many rifles that we could, then we could talk about at one time but suffice it to say this is one of the options that they have and this is their rifle with um, PSA furniture and the Geisley Mark 14 rail. So with that said let's take a little look at the rifle itself. We do have a first look video out for you guys so if you want to see a breakdown of all the different components and everything on this rifle, I would encourage you to check that out. Um, we're just going to kind of gloss over it today. PSA CCS stock. We've got the uh, PSA grip swapped out for a BC, uh, BCM grip so I could have a grip plug, which is something I like to have. It's got the Radian charging handle, Radian safety, hyperfire trigger. We've got standard controls, although we do have these nice 
battle arms development, a um, little bit nicer takedown pins. Up front, we have the Geisley Mark 14 rail with a 14.5 inch FN chrome lined hammer forged barrel. And what I had to send out to PSA was a Griffin Armament Plan A uh, 2.25 inch flash hider so they could pin and weld this thing to 16. PSA does not currently offer Griffin muzzle devices. So if that is something that you guys would like to see, please let me know. I've already talked to Cameron about the possibility of getting that stuff added to their lineup because I think there would be some good demand for it. But if that would be you, please let me know in the comments so I can pass that along. Now, um, the accessories on here real quick. We've got Magpul MS sling. Uh, this is my issued sling at work. I'm not particularly fond of it, but it's fine. Uh, Magpul MBUS 3 front and rear flip up iron sights. Primary arms, Pegasus 3X micro magnifier with an Aimpoint Duty RDS. And then a mod light with a Surefire tail cap and pressure pad, BCM angled foregrip. And on the front, Griffin Recce 5K to screw on to that Griffin muzzle device, as well as, of course, the Liberty's Defense cover review on that is coming soon. Don't worry. So with that being said, how does this thing run? Well, as I mentioned, I do use this on patrol, so I do trust my life to this rifle. I have around 1,100 rounds through it, and I've had, to my recollection, two um, malfunctions. I believe at least one of them was um, ammo-related, probably both. But if we say that only one was ammo-related, that would mean we had a failure rate of 0.1%, give or take. So I'm very pleased with that. This was a very pleasant rifle to shoot. Once I swapped out the carbine buffer for an H3. So my one um, gripe, if you will, is that PSA does not offer these rifles with a A5 length um, buffer system. I have found if you watched my video on the HRT clone, that the A5 system makes the rifle extremely pleasant to shoot. Um, it would be nice if PSA offered that option. I don't think they currently do, especially in their forged mil spec line, but that would be an option I would love to see in the future because that would really help make these rifles run even a little bit smoother. So switching to an H3 buffer makes this thing shoot pretty darn smoothly though with the Recce 5K. It is a lower back pressure can. It's not a true flow through. If you'd like to see my review on that, I'll link it above. But this rifle is very pleasant to shoot. You can run it pretty fast with this hyperfire trigger. It's a fairly light single stage trigger, probably around four, four and a half pounds. So you can run this thing pretty fast. I've gotten Pretty good accuracy too um, before I mounted all my duty accessories on it and set it up and qualified with it as my duty rifle. I did shoot some groups uh, with a Vortex Strike Eagle 3 to 18, and the best groups that I got were right around an inch and a half, give or take, with both IMI 77 grain as well as some 75 grain hand loads that I had. For a chrome lined barrel, I think that is excellent accuracy. I think that that is more than acceptable for, like I said, a chrome lined barrel, which generally aren't generally aren't the most accurate barrels. They're more designed for very long life as far as the barrel life goes. So accuracy has been excellent. The Controls are good. They don't have a ton of flash on these rifles. On their billet series, I believe they do have some ambidextrous controls, um, if that's what you're into. But this one is very um, well set up, I would say. It's got some of the nice little creature comforts without having anything uh, crazy or potentially unreliable. I love the Radian Ambi safety, especially with the 
45 degree throw option. I do like these takedown pins. Again, they're not a huge deal, but they just make it a little bit easier to break the rifle down. And then of course, I've really found that an ambidextrous charging handle is something that I really like to use. So good on PSA for throwing in the Radian ambidextrous LT because it is very nice. They also did include one of their PSA brand magazines, uh, Sabre branded, I guess, too. And I've had no issues with it. I've run, I don't know how many hundred rounds through it, but it's given me no problems. It's, I would say, pretty comparable to a PMAG. Am I going to go sell all my PMAGs to just buy these? Nope. But I have no problem using it, and it's in my regular rotation. I do like this little bit of stippling on the side, so when you're doing your beer can grip, it's just a little bit of extra purchase for you. We'll now ghost the trigger. Rifle's clear. So we'll ghost the trigger now as another YouTuber made famous. Yeah, that's pretty light. Pretty short reset, nice and crisp, of course. You can hear it very well. And again, yeah. Oh, all in all, I would say that's probably around a four pound trigger and uh, no issues at all with that. I've enjoyed it. This is my first hyperfire. So I have been very pleased with how it's, how it's worked. We do have also too the uh, Radian trigger guard here, so you can get a little bit more space in there if you're wearing gloves. But all in all, guys, I think this is an excellent rifle. I do, like I said, trust my life to this rifle as I have been using it on duty for a number of months now. Um, it's been reliable, it's accurate, it's pleasant to shoot, and I don't really think there's much more that you could ask for. I think this is a very competitively priced rifle too. These things come in depending on what options. And again, PSA offers about 3 million options for the rifles. So it's hard to um, pinpoint an exact price point for any of these things. But generally they seem to come in around the 900 to 12 or $1,300 mark. I think that these pose an excellent value, especially if you're looking for a quality rifle with like I said, some of these nice to have parts that you would probably want to go out and upgrade yourself that come stock. So if you're looking for a duty rifle, gentlemen, I do think the PSA Sabre is going to be good to go. I am very pleased with this gun. I have recommended it to some friends and now I'm recommending it to you guys. It would be nice, like I said, if PSA would update um, some of their options on the mil spec rifles to include the A5 buffer, buffer system. Um, what would be really nice is if PSA would have some kind of weapon builder where you could just pick all the parts and, you know, assemble it essentially yourself and have them build it for you. But I can understand why something like that might be pretty uh, cost or time prohibitive. And it's probably easier for them to just do batches of rifles and then offer them on the site. So I get it. Although it would be nice, like I said. So if you gentlemen have any experience with the PSA Sabre, please let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. If you guys would like to see them offer Griffin muzzle devices for pinning and welding, please let me know too. Now, is this a true URGI? No, it's not. However, I think it comes fairly close as far as the setup goes. The Geisley Mark 16 rail on the URGI simply has uh, M-Lock right here where we just have these cooling slots on the Mark 14. Um, the barrels on the URGI are 14 and a half inch Danny Defense barrels. These are FN, another contract company for the United States government. So the uh, three-pronged flash hider is also obviously not the same as, but similar to the Surefire uh, three and four prong series. So I do see this as, even though it's not billed that way, as essentially PSA's version of the URGI. Um, and all, it's a very capable rifle. So gentlemen, thank you for watching today. 
thank you to our veterans for your service, particularly those World War II veterans who are still alive. If you gentlemen made it this far, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching today. As always, repent and be baptized. Shoot, move, and communicate. And I'll see you next time. Saber, it's time to come home.